Hey everyone, my name is Reed and we are here. This is going to be week number 11 of the APA Academy, the second to final week. And uh, it's going to be a really interesting matchup, right? So I don't think I match up that well against Rain at all, but we're up against a Rain team right now. And he had a lot of different options to bring here. Uh, so for one thing, you can see he brings the, the house in terms of the Rain core. He does have the Tornadoes for... Um, max accuracy hurricanes he has a kabutop swapper that really much that pretty much just does the most against my team i believe he also had he also has a ludicolo which ludicolo alone uh can kind of do a huge huge number to my team but um he has so many different threats uh he doesn't bring the umbreon so actually this is funny because i was talking about this uh matchup with randy hld and I, when i showed him my team the only attacking move that my um Greninja has, I believe my Greninja might be Scarfed, and the only attacking move it has is Dark Pulse, because, uh, and, and Yushin, I believe, but the, but the only real attacking move is, is Dark Pulse, because without the Umbreon or the Zerark, uh, he doesn't really have a Dark Resist, really, so I figured that that was pretty darn spammable against his team, and I intended uh, really to spam it in this situation. Um, other than that, I believe I just have a free, reasonably standard Calm Mind Aromatisse, um, a Bugsy Galvantula. This is the, my first time bringing a Bugsy Galvantula instead of an Electric Z. But uh, we do have the Sea Webs. We do have um, Bug Buzz and just Thunder and Bolts, which I believe. Um, I don't think he had a Ground type on his draft other than the Swampert, but I did have. I believe I had the Energy Ball. Maybe I don't have Volt Switch. Maybe I just have uh, Thunder and Energy Ball. Uh, um, this is why is pretty much max special defense it can probably take one hit and then kind of try to hit something back um and i believe it had yachi berry i'm remembering now that it had yachi berry and i believe this is a scarfed swallow as well just um boom bursting trying to do uh some damage in this matchup but other than that uh his team is pretty straightforward just beat me down with the rain and a haxorus that's super duper scary but um i believe i want to lead off with a greninja because um my greninja is kind of meant to do more damage to the team and especially once i saw the 6v6 matchup i was thinking that the greninja can open the door for some other mons later but uh greninja is i don't think it's gonna really you know win the match for me late game so um i lead off with my greninja and i really wanted to just click dark pulse because i did not think that he would want to stay in here at all but i end up clicking u-turn and uh, i do an okay amount but uh I was kind of confused about him wanting to stay in. I could have clicked Ice Beam. I could have done so many different things. And especially with my Aromatisse in the back, with other certain things that I could have had to check this thing, it kind of didn't make a whole bunch of sense to me, to me for him to want to stay in and just click Dragon Dance. But uh, I bring in my Aromatisse. And here, I was really afraid of a plus one Poison Z. So I swatched, swapped out just to kind of... Um, Scout that out. He goes for a regular poison jab, which is, again, super duper scary. But in this situation, I just go for the U-turn because either he's going to Dragon Dance and let me U-turn out, or he's going to attack me and uh, it's going to bring in and it's going to bring something in anyway. So regardless, I felt like U-turning was my play. I really could not afford to just stay in and let him Dragon Dance in front of me for free. So once I get out um, from out this thing, this thing is at plus two, which is, again, super duper scary. But this does allow in my Aromatisse and... Um, I was reasonably confident this was a role that was pretty much in my favor to, to be able to take and I do take it reasonably fine uh, we actually had to recreate this match and uh, there was a reasonably small chance that he would KO me straight up but uh, we just had to play the play the role and just hope that uh, the, the role matched up the first time and twice he got pretty much the same role I think it was like a minor like 4 HP difference between the two roles but now he comes in with the Pelipper, and this thing is pretty much done. I believe I might try to set up a wish in this situation. I do have the Thunderbolt on this thing. Um, yeah, he just he just starts to hurricane me. He tries to take me out. Um, I I might have gone for the Thunderbolt just in case he did anything else. He could have tried to. I don't know. I don't even know what he would have done. Um, actually, I I believe I actually could have taken a U-turn potentially. Um, so yeah, I, I might have thrown up a wish in the air I, because I do remember running that calc and being able to potentially take a U-turn. But regardless, now my Kirim gets to come in and I knew that he would want to bring in the Swampert. And this is a pretty much max physically defensive Swampert, physically defensive Kirim with Sub Bruce to specifically to be able to take on this interaction, right? And uh, just setting up the Sub 
I believe he had to EQ in order to take out my sub. He, uh, he can waterfall, he can do any other type of ice punch or anything like that. So I knew he had to EQ, right? And uh, this would allow me to ice beam. And with two rounds of leftovers, that would bring me up more, more than healthy enough to be able to kind of... Um, play around in this interaction so i would always win this interaction because ice beam should always be a three hit ko and between uh another sub and another roost i i should always uh leave this interaction more than healthy enough to even you know take on some other mons later in the match i believe here i potentially sub no i just go for the ice beam um but i see from the earthquake damage on this turn that i am free to roost on this turn i believe um, I believe I risk him having superpower because uh, Randy did bring up after the match that he could just straight up have superpower. But I believe I just go for a bruised ear to keep myself up to keep myself healthy enough where uh, it doesn't really matter what happens. Um, and now, uh, I. I obviously can't stay in here, and yeah, I did think that there was a chance that he want to switch out, so Roost would keep me healthy for whatever uh, later interactions w w would happen. Um, I go, I bring in this thing in to, to kind of sack it off. Maybe I take a hit, and maybe uh, maybe like quick clicks Aqua Jet. I take that easily, and I take a hit after that and do something. But I knew it was unlikely. I knew that this was more or less a sack, and uh, he clicks Knock Off, and uh, it kind of builds out his you know set in my head uh, i believe he's showed sword dance already sword dance um knockoff potentially has liquidation uh he has to have liquidation could potentially have stone edge or aqua jet as that fourth move i don't quite yet know but i can't really mess around with this too too much but even in rain my scarf your ninja can come in just click it's only uh, a move other than u-turn just click click uh dark pulse does a big big chunk to this as the rain stops which is super important right because then that allows my galvantula to come in and potentially try to uh do some kind of a re uh, a revenge play right now right but uh this is super important because i knew that the pelipper would want to come in and this allows me to make a pretty wild play i knew that he would want to set up the rain in this situation and uh, and he would want me to to click thunder to try to maximize his turns of rain for his kabutops and his swamper and or his ludicolo right so i end up clicking z sticky web now i didn't know this before the match right but i showed the match off to randy hld like i normally would and uh i showed him that i had bug z and just out of nowhere i decided to, to check out what Z Sticky Web did, and Z Sticky Web gives me a plus one in speed. So first of all, this is really important because it gives me Sticky Webs on his team, which means a lot of my Mons can outspeed him even in rain now. And my Galvantula and I has enough speed to outspeed this this Tornadus. And I didn't know what set it was going to be, but I just went for it. I went for the Thunder, and it, it's a straight Oko. It was it was a more of a uh, an offensive Tornadus this, this in this matchup. Which uh, was what allowed me to be able to take this thing out. And uh, now he has to bring in the Swampert. Which even though it has double speed with the Sticky Web drop. It does allow my Galvantula to just straight up take it out with an Energy Ball here. And now my, my Galvantula has three straight KOs. I believe in the last three turns no less. But uh, nothing on his team can outspeed my Galvantula. And now he brings in the Ludicolo, right? And this was th this was exactly what I brought the Z uh, Z Buginium Z for. Because I didn't think I I think like any type of bulkier build, and he was able and he was going to be able to um, take a bug buzz. But he didn't know that he took a bug buzz. He didn't calc it apparently, and he took it fine, and he was able to take me out with a surf. But he thought for sure that I would be able to take it out with a bug buzz. If he had gone into this first, that would have changed the makeup of the game quite a bit. But now this will allow me to go into my Kiram. So here I'm in a position where. Uh, I am free to sub up. I resist both of its stabs. Hiram has a good defensive typing for the situation. And um, I'm able to take either of its stabs. It's going to take out itself out to Life Orb. And that gives me a free sub in order to not get KO'd by the Kabutops. Now, I was really afraid of this interaction because I was thinking that I would have to take out the Ludicolo and that would leave me wide open to the Kabutops. But um, once I had a chance to think it through, also. I was really afraid that uh, its last move would be Aqua Jet, but I believe I did get to see all of its moves. Uh, maybe I didn't get to see Stone Edge. Maybe that was uh, the move that I wasn't thinking of. But if 
if it had Aqua Jet, then that could, and I wasn't able to get up a sub, then that could have potentially been really bad for me. But the fact that I did get up a sub, which means that I was able to take whatever this thing wanted to go for, and uh, Kiram is able to pick up the final KO, does uh, mean that we end up winning this match. Now, Galvangela completely just came through for me. Obviously, again, he should have, he probably should have gone straight into Lily Colo. That would have saved him the Swampert, and it would have saved him the Tornadoes, and it would have saved him a couple turns of rain as well. But, um, I think Kiram was in a position where Kiram could have played around the rest of his mons. He could have had superpower on the, on the, uh, Tornadoes, but, uh, Ice Beam should have been able to KO. If Galvantula KO'd, then, uh, Tornado, then Kiram should have been able to KO, and, uh, I did have a Scarf Swallow in the back, so, uh, even Swallow Boom Burst should have done enough um, to the Kabutops, given that it did not have Aqua Jet and that it took all that damage from Dark Pulse, it had been chipped down enough where uh, Swallow Boom Burst would have done enough damage, I believe, and even then, uh, I think I would have had to have played this endgame pretty darn well, but I think Swallow and Kiram were the mons that I needed for this endgame no matter what happened. However, um, the results did end up being skewed because he he did uh, go into the Tornadoes before he went into the Ludicolo. But that was a really fun match. Galvantula is doing the dang thing. Uh, I've been loving Galvantula to death. I have it in the MPL as well as here. And um, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Galvantula in the MPL is my second KO leader behind Megalodios. And uh, it just picked up three dang KOs in this matchup right here. So Cavantula has been a lot of fun for me to use. And I will very likely bring it to a playoff team if we do get there in the end. That's going to be my week 11. We'll be back with the final week coming up pretty soon. As well as the final weeks of the MPL and any potential playoff runs coming up after that. As well as some more weeks of the ICBA and uh, some other stuff coming up really, really soon. But uh, with that, once again, thank you guys so much for watching. going to be once again out.